Please stand. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Joined in to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. A reading from the third chapter of Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria, and the planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that, that the Lord has made. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that, that the Lord has made. The right hand of the Lord is powerful. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day, this is the day, that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that, that the Lord has made. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the power of the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it this is 
is the day. This is the day that, that the Lord has made. The second reading is from the 10th chapter of Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever had two people try to tell you a story about something that happened and they kept correcting each other on the details? My parents were notorious for doing this. Dad would start, well then last Tuesday, mom would say, I think it was Thursday. Dad, are you sure? I'm pretty sure it was Tuesday. Mom, no, it was Thursday because Big Bang Theory was on and that's on Thursdays. Dad, well, anyway, whatever day it was, along uh, the paper boy came to the door, and Mom, it was a girl, not a boy, and there were two of them. It's a little frustrating to try to listen to this story because I want to say, get to the point. But they're my parents, so I never did that. Eventually, they do get to the point, and they always do agree on what the point of the story is supposed to be. They disagree on the details, but the essence of the story is the truth. The details in each of the four Easter stories in our Gospels are different. And that drives some people nuts. People who don't want the Bible to have any inconsistencies at all. The number of messengers and who they are is different. In Matthew, it's one angel. In Mark, it's one young man. In Luke, it's two men. In John, it's two angels. But they're all dressed in white. There is agreement on that. The number of women who come to the tomb is different. In Matthew's gospel, it's two. In Mark, it's three. In Luke, it's at least five because they name three and then say, and there were other women as well. 
John is a little confusing because John mentions only one, Mary Magdalene. But then later when Mary sees Peter, she says, they have taken his body and we do not know where they have laid him, indicating that maybe there was more than one. The reason for coming to the tomb is different. Were the women coming to anoint the body with spices? In Mark and Luke's gospel, yes. The Sabbath was beginning on the night Jesus died, and there was no time to anoint the body beforehand, so they had to wait until the Sabbath was over. But in Matthew and in John's gospel, there's no mention of spices at all. In fact, in John's gospel, that clearly states that Jesus' body was anointed with spices by Nicodemus and by Joseph of Arimathea, before his burial. In those two gospels, the women were coming simply to see the tomb. Did the women see the resurrected Jesus at the tomb? Well, in Matthew and John, yes. In Mark and Luke, no. Now, some people who do not believe in Christ will point to these inconsistencies in the details to say that the Bible cannot be trusted as an authoritative source. Please. My parents had trouble remembering the details of what happened to them two days prior. But the essence of their story is true. The events of Christ's resurrection were passed on orally for decades before being written down, and four different gospel writers are involved. There are bound to be differences in the details. But the essence of the resurrection story is true. And the essence of that story is the same in all four Gospels. In all four Gospels, Mary Magdalene and probably some other women came to Jesus' tomb. Jesus really had died and really was buried. In every story, they are given a message. Whether it is from one man or two men or one angel or two angels makes no difference. The message is the same. Do not be afraid. Jesus Christ is not here. He has risen from the dead. Go and tell his disciples. And the other common element, the most important element in all four Gospels, is, of course, that the tomb is empty. In Matthew's Gospel, the angel of the Lord rolls away the stone. But the purpose of doing this is not to let Jesus come out. Jesus is already gone. The angel does not open the tomb to let Jesus come out, but to invite the women to come in and to see that, yes, the tomb is empty. The women run to tell the disciples what the angel said. And there they meet Jesus himself and they worship him. Their religion told them explicitly that only God is to be worshipped, but they worship Jesus and are not rebuked for doing so. For they realize that Jesus is God incarnate. Jesus then gives them the same instructions that the angel gave them. Do not be afraid. Go and tell my disciples. And even though in all four of the Gospels, the resurrection of Jesus is in the final chapter of the Gospel. Oh, okay, in John, it's in the next to the last chapter. The resurrection is not the end of the story. Even Jesus' ascension 40 days later is not the end of the story. The resurrection is only the beginning. For in every gospel, there is a commissioning, an instruction to go into the world and share the gospel, share the good news that the tomb is empty, that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, has risen from the dead. This Easter Sunday is unlike any Easter Sunday we have ever known. There are no lilies. There is no Easter egg hunt for the children. There is no chancel choir. No bell choir. No trumpets. We will be having a virtual communion, but we are not sharing the same loaf of bread, not sharing the same cup of wine. We're gathering online not in person. And no one is in this building except for the few people necessary to put this service online. But even though the details of this Easter Sunday are different, the essence of the message 
is the same. Do not be afraid. Even in the midst of this pandemic, do not be afraid. We gather, either in person or online, to worship Jesus, but then we are sent out into the world, into the mission field to proclaim the gospel. And as we do our proclaiming, if we don't get all the details right, make sure you convey the main point, that the tomb is empty, that Jesus Christ is risen. Death could not contain him. The powers of hell could not defeat him. O oh, death, where is thy victory? O oh, death, where is thy sting? Christ comes to give us life and to give it abundantly. And by God's grace through faith in Christ, we too are promised resurrection. Christ is risen. Christ is risen he, Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us confess our faith, the faith in which we are baptized, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders, especially our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, and our Synod Bishop, Suzanne Dillahunt, and women bishops in this city of Bell Fountain, Karen Therese, 
and Cheryl Sigenthaler. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying assuring them of your loving presence. We pray for all in our congregation who may be ill, hospitalized, or recovering, including Jan Lowry, Tori Geib, Tim Petracek, and anyone else we now name either aloud or in silence. Lord, in your mercy, Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day, musicians, assistants, sound room techs, preachers, readers, and all others who would provide this online worship service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died, especially a member of the Belfountain Police Department and Jenna, the wife of Rick Ramsey's nephew. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we pray for all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world, to fulfill us for your holy will, and accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ 
may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All means all, and the gifts of God are free. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. If you are watching this at home with your own bread and wine, we trust that the presence of God is in, with, and under the elements that you receive for yourself. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever.
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you.